Well, it's a fine day for us uh, today, especially for me, because uh, we're doing something uh, especially for our friends and future leaders. We're talking about African children. And the beauty of this all is that never have I spoken on one show to this number of children. Not one, not two, not three. We're talking about seven children. And these are the future of the continent. On today's show, we'll be speaking with these people, asking them what they think about Africa, about their career, and a couple of other things that will be projecting, you know, the African continent in a very, very fantastic light. But again, in all of this, I have five females, no, I beg your pardon, six, and just a gentleman. Welcome to the show. I'm Suleiman. Let's go speak with the children on this special day. My children are such bundles of joy, innocent, heartwarming, beautiful and endearing. They're the little precious beings in every home and every kid you talk to has something to teach. They have a lot to say, a lot to give to their society through ideas and yet desires for greatness. Now, African children, like every other child in the world, you know, they're also the future of our continent. They hold solutions to problems, keys to locked do doors, and I had the hope we all cherish, guide and guard as a people. Now, children in Africa, talented, smart and sound, have often been victims of persecution, early marriages and recruitment into rebel groups. More than ever, there's a great need for every African government to protect and promote the future of the continent. On today's show, before we go on, I must first uh, say thanks to the parents of these beautiful children. It wasn't an easy task for some of them, getting them to stay put and get the, the Zoom, the virtual meeting set up. So uh, thanks to all the parents. But uh, today I have seven of them. Starting up with uh, uh, Oseme Odibo and uh, Omokorede Balogu uh, from Nigeria. And uh, pretty much later on the show, I'll be having Gianna uh, Ironsi and, uh, from South Africa and Zawadi Kayo, who is a... Uh, a spoken word artist and Billy O'Carl from Kenya. Later on, all will be also having Tio Lupe, Tio Lulokme, Pokwala, and uh, Camila. Uh, that's my daughter from Nigeria. So now, now let's quickly start with uh, Oseme and uh, Omokoride. Oseme, you're 10 years old, and Omokoride, you're 8. Let me start with you, Omokoride. How are you? I'm fine. Well, I, I'm happy. I'm happy to see you today. And uh, quickly, and uh, Osame, how, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. I'm doing fine. Okay, this is how it's going to go. Whoever I want, uh, you know, to talk, I'll call your name so that you know it is uh, your turn to talk, okay? So that we can uh, get this going quickly. Uh, Osame, this is uh, to yes. you. Uh, okay, good, great. Uh, so, uh, quickly, let's. Uh, what do you do? Uh, what uh, What do you do in school uh, at the moment? You, you're ten years old. Uh, you want to tell us what uh, excites you, your subject, what exactly you love about your school? My favorite subject is mathematics. I am presently the assembly prefect in my school. I am also a violinist. Yes, that is all. I know there's, <laughs> well, there's more, but again, uh, let me come to you, uh, uh, Omokoride. How are you? What, what do you love doing? I, 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 like, I like playing at home with my friends. You like playing what? So how long have you been at home? I'm sorry, 
What did you say? How long have you been at home? Have you started your physical school? Have you started going to school? Yes. Yes. Hmm. That's that, that that's good. So uh, let me let me come back to you, uh, Osame. Uh, you 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 are a violinist, and of course, uh, you said that's all. You're also uh, a leader in your school. Uh, so, how are you planning to spend Children's Day? Uh, do you have any plans? Yes, for Children's Day tomorrow, I'm going to school to celebrate with my friends. Are you people having a party? What uh, is the mood of the celebration, uh, the mode of the celebration? What are those things? Are you having a dance? Is there a singing competition? Are there games? Uh, what more do you have? Yes, there is a party. There are going to be games, singing competition and dances. Uh, but again, you know there is COVID. So uh, how are you going to have that dance? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, well, well, we'll hope and we'll love to see pictures and, uh, you know, snippets and uh, videos. Uh, Amor Karide, I come to you. Um, are you having a party in your school tomorrow to mark Children's Day? No. Oh, great. So, uh, so I have a party today. Oh, there was a party today? Yes. So tell me about it. Uh, how did the party go? It was great. Awesome. Uh, did you dance? Do you love to dance? Can you dance? You love to sing? What can you do? Well, or rather, what did you do? I danced and sing with my friends in school. Oh, that's good. And um, is it who's your favorite, uh, you know, musician? I don't know. <laughs> All right, because since you know how to dance, uh, well, anyway, I, I can't dance. I don't know how to dance, and that's just the truth. Uh, will you be willing to teach me how to dance? Yes. Oh, awesome! Great. I hold you to that. I, I'll come back to you so that uh, we can start our dance lessons. Quickly, let's see how we can close this conversation. Uh, I, I come back to um, Oseme. And o Oseme, what would you like to be when you grow up? I would like to become an obstetrician. Hmm. So that, uh, so I think uh, my, my doctor is about to lose her job so i'll take off my glasses and i'll come see you when that time comes because now i'm squinting with these uh, glasses off uh so you, will you be willing to help me out then yes sir <laughs> all right okay so and um do you have any school in mind where do you hope to study no i think uh well that's a fine choice and i do hope uh you'll be very, very uh, good at what you love to do. And uh, do you have anything to say to the government of your country, uh, African leaders? Uh, what are those things that you would love them to do to helping African children like yourself? I would love for that to be like um, free education, for your children, and I would love that to be good roads, and I just want the Nigeria to be great. You, you, you said something about good roads. You, you don't like the kind of roads you see in Nigeria, do you? No. Hmm. Well, I hope the president and all these uh, uh, governors in Nigeria, they're listening and watching. Uh, Osemi doesn't like the roads. Uh, it's, it's always a bumpy ride, I guess, when you go to school. Yes. Hmm, rough. And uh, Omar Korede, what would you like to be when you grow up? Be a farmer. All of a sudden, I just realized I haven't eaten. You want to give me food, feed the nation, right? 
So, uh, what are your favorite subjects in school? Mm, just phonics. Phonics? Yes. So, but um, what um, kind of farming uh, do you have in mind? Uh, animal husbandry, you want to go into crop cultivation, or you want to have everything and have this very big farm uh, that uh, you have a lot of people working for you, feeding a lot of people across the continent? I like to have everything. I think I want to be like you, honestly. I love to have everything too, everything good. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine place for us to leave it. But again, I needed to ask you the same question I asked Osame. What are those things you don't like when you're going to school? Are there things you see uh, when, who takes you to school? Your mom or your dad or both of them? My mommy. So when mommy takes you to school and you look through the window, are there things you see and you say, oh, mommy, I don't like that? Yes. Uh, tell me more. Tell me what are those things you see you, you really don't like? I'm sorry. Obviously, I can't remember. But there are things you see you don't like and you say, Mommy, 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 I don't like this. Well, mommy, Mommy, why is this this way? Right? <laughs> No. Oh no. Anyway, th did you tell did, did did you tell your friends you were going to be on television today? No. So how many friends uh, do you have? In school. Yeah, in school. Mm. Desmond, Victoria, Alexia, Williams, and and Adeleji. Mm, that's about six. Five. Yes. Yeah, five of them. Well, I'm excited speaking with you, uh, Omar Koridea, and I hope uh, we will have this conversation again, especially now that you have agreed to be my dance teacher. And uh, I hope you tell your mom that uh, so that we can fix this uh, dance lessons. So it's uh, nice speaking with you, Omar Koride uh, and uh, Oseme. Thank you very much, Oseme. I think, uh, well, have a, a wonderful uh, Children's Day tomorrow, uh, Oseme. And of course, uh, for Omar Koride, you've already had your party today. So we hope to speak uh, to you uh, in June again, yes, hopefully, when we'll be having the day for the African child. We'll take a moment. When we come back, we have um, some other children uh, to speak with here on the continent. Don't you go nowhere, because uh, yeah, we, we have this progression as we move on the show, and it has to do with the ages of those children. And uh, never have I had a fine moment learning something about uh, how they don't like our roads. We'll be back. The continent really cannot afford to abandon its future or fail to cater for its brightest and most beautiful resources. Uh, we had uh, uh, our conversation there with Omar Koride and uh, um, I'm trying to recall, you know, uh, her name, Anoseme. And Anoseme particularly uh, didn't quite like the kind of the state of roads in Nigeria. And it's one thing, you know, for a child. Uh, uh, to be so disturbed and agitated about, uh, you know, dilapidated infrastructure. And it's another thing for us uh, as adults and as a government 
uh, to quickly move in and put in place. You know, with many families struggling to feed and survive, there is an urgent necessity of helping more African families to educate their children who are capable of raising their families to greater positions. And that is why Omokare Day is saying, I don't want to do any other thing amongst uh, so many other things that I will also love to do. Top on the list, I want to be a farmer and I want to be an all-round farmer feeding not just our people, but the world. Now, quickly here, I'm now being joined by uh, Gianna Ironsi uh, from South Africa, and of course, Zawadi, uh, also Kayo, who is a spoken word artist, and Billy Okal from Kenya. And these are fine people. I, I love the smiles on your faces. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, uh, Billy, Gianna, and Zawadi, how are you all doing? Good and you. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for inviting me. You you're welcome. <laughs> and Billy, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Uh, okay, quickly here. Um let's start from South Africa with you Gianna and Zawadi. Uh let's start with uh, Gianna. Uh, what are the exciting things uh, about your country? The exciting things about my country is that there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities to do different things and and life to have here. Hmm. And we love the beaches. You love the beaches? Yes. So how, how often do you, can you swim? Do you know how to swim? Yes, I know how to swim. Now again, I, I just found myself a teacher. So uh, we'll come back and talk about the swimming lessons, okay? <laughs> so, uh, and for you, Zawadi. Oh, what? so hi, thank you for the opportunity. I'm honored to be here. What I like about my country is the wildlife. I like the wildlife because it, if it weren't for the wildlife, uh, Kenya and our continent, Africa, wouldn't be known for anything. Like, let's say someone would go and ask, oh, maybe we can go for a vacation here. Then they're like, oh, what are we going to do there? So wildlife helps us stand out. Hmm. So, uh, and you're not you're not scared of these uh, of the wild, you know, when you go out to to, to watch some of these uh, uh, animals. No, I'm scared. I'm actually like happy. I'm seeing my like animals of the continent. I'm also learning. And uh, what about you, uh, Billy? Uh, our country, I love about my country, it has so many things to do and, and it's, I, it's um, playful and I'm always, my country is, I'm excited for the trees and playing uh, at my dad's place. Hmm. You know, um, so, um, in school, you know, I've been asking about subjects, uh, favorite subjects. Uh, I, I will stay with you with Billy. Billy, I want you to go with this uh, first. Uh, what are the favorite subjects uh, in school? Max, English, and hygiene, and environmental. You also love mathematics. Yeah. And Zawadi, how did you start out, you know, spoken word? Tell us the places you've performed. Okay, so I started out uh, poetry or spoken word when I was three years old. Um, I've performed at State House two times. I've been at, um, I've gone to so many places. I've been at the inauguration of President Uhuru Kenyatta, Jamhuri Day. I've also been to Kenyatta University. I've gone to so many places, actually countless of them I can't really remember. Wow, this is awesome. And of course, uh, have you been able to pen something down uh, for children across the continent uh, on the occasion of uh, Children's Day? Uh, pardon me, I didn't hear that question. No, no, I'm, as a spoken 
word artist. Uh, have you been able to write something, you know, a poem uh, for African children? Uh, not yet, really, but actually, good point. I'm going to talk to my mom about that. So how do you write? How do you get inspired to write? Uh, what uh, pushes you uh, to, you know, to write in? Actually, it's not me who writes it. It's my mom and I who do it together. We do it as a team, like, um, let's see, we give each other ideas, like what's happening around the world, what we want to change. So uh, we do it with my mom. And very soon we are going to be doing a poem about children. Let me go to Gianna. And, uh, you know, for you, Gianna, you haven't told us, uh, or rather I haven't actually asked, what are your favorite, you know, subjects in school? My favorite subjects in school are history and geography. Hmm. I love history. Uh, I also yeah. love geography. So uh, how widely traveled are you? Excuse me? So, uh, have you gone around your country? How many places have you gone to? I have been to Zimbabwe and Tanzania. Oh, tell me about and Tanzania. Tanzania. I, I, I hear Tanzania is a beautiful place. Tell me about it. It is a very beautiful place. I loved uh, all the different, the different culture that it is, and Africa's different culture is very beautiful. So yes, I really loved it. So um, what do you hope to be, Jan, uh, uh, I'm still with you, what do you hope to become uh, in future? In future, I would like to become a child doctor. I would love, I really love children and I would really love to help them, so yes. That is beautiful. And um, are you thinking of uh, switching your love for subjects? Because uh, geography and history, yes, uh, we all need to you know, know our history and history of other people. Uh, but have you started you know, putting uh, your focus on those subjects that will make you a good doctor? Um, I will start doing that when I get older, so when I get into the higher grades. So what grade, are, what grade are you at the moment? I am in grade five. Great. So um, uh, let me go to Billy. Uh, Billy, what would you like to improve, you know, about your environment? Uh, people wearing masks and people respecting the 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 I I understand you said people wearing masks uh and were you worried when covid came Yes How how did you receive the news you know when you go out uh, your mom, your dad, they, you know, your parents tell you to avoid people, don't shake hands. And I can see yeah. a big, I can see a big bottle of hand sanitizer in front of you. So tell us uh, how you've been coping with your friends. Mm, I was keeping social distance, wearing my mask when I'm outside and playing with my dad and having fun. Yeah, I can see a video of yourself and your dad. Um, can you see the video? Mm. Yeah, where, where was this uh, shot? Uh, where, where was this taken? Is this your house? No. So you went out with your dad. Where was this? Uh, cause curry and quick nuts. Hmm. Well, I, I can also see this other picture. Who do you look more like, your dad or... No, I can see already. You look like your dad. Yes. So l let me go to Zawadi here quickly. Zawadi, uh, so the COVID-19, you know, has it hampered your performance? Uh, being a spoken word artist, um, have you been able to perform since COVID uh, came? Actually, I think 
COVID has really affected the arts industry. It's really also affect, uh, affected my profession. I haven't like been going out lately to like perform. So yes, it's really affected me, but I just hope that soon uh, the COVID-19 will end so that I can go back to my professions because I've really missed being on stage, being on the cameras. So yeah, it's affected me. Well, I, I can imagine uh, what COVID must have done. And I can't wait to see you go back to doing what you love doing. Uh, and New Central Television is uh, here for you to give you that coverage and help you, uh, you know, showcase what you're doing for the world. Quickly, before we go, uh, all three of you, let me start with uh, Gianna. Uh, what are those things that you love uh, African leaders to do for children uh, on the continent? I would love um, African leaders to do for children is I would love them to listen to us like and l listen to us when we speak and just yeah listen yeah really and involve us in things too. Are you happy, uh, you know, speaking on television today? Because uh, this is more like uh, letting people hear you. Uh, and I'm See. hoping that, that leaders uh, can do more and listen uh, to children. Yes. Yes, I'm very happy. I'm happy too uh, meeting you, uh, Gianna. Uh, let me quickly go to Kenya, uh, to Billy, Billy uh, and Zawadi. Uh, let's start with uh, you, Billy. Uh, what, what's your message to African leaders? Mm. Africa is a good country. Africa has 52 countries. And the countries I know at Africa is Kenya, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, and Nigeria. Actually, I think it's 54, uh, 54 countries on the continent. Uh, we also have some that are trying, you know, to trying to become countries. Uh, they're still trying uh, to say we want to be recognized as country, but until then, we have 54. And it's nice uh, that uh, you can name some of these countries uh, uh, on the continent. And uh, Zawadi, uh, final moment from you, message to African leaders. Uh, what I'd like to say to African leaders, we're doing a good job, though we can improve more with the environment by not cutting trees, poaching animals. Uh, we should do like more river cleaning, forest cleaning, like community um, cleaning. But we're really doing a good job in Africa. We just need to improve on our environment. You all have been beautiful. Many thanks uh, for speaking with me. And uh, I'm excited. I'm hoping African leaders uh, truly, as uh, Gianna said, must listen and involve every one of you uh, in policies uh, that will help make the continent a better continent. So, uh, uh, Bailey, uh, Zawadi, and Gianna, thank you for speaking with me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, we have uh, uh, another moment. We'll take a break now. When we'll come back, we have two more uh, to wrap up the show. Uh, I have learned quite a lot listening to these people. And you can imagine uh, when an African child tells you, listen to us more, please. Is that too much to ask? We'll be back. Hi, my name is Teolo Papapula, and I am a senior at the one and only 
Lithia Springs High School, go Lions. And I'm so honored to have been awarded with the Michael Langford Legacy Scholarship. Seeing the impact that Mr. Michael Langford had on the community has inspired me to want to pursue a post-secondary career where I impact so many other people like he did. Thank you for, to the Langford family for awarding me with this scholarship. I'm so excited for my post-secondary career. And this is just a token that will help be extremely helpful during this journey. I will be spending my next four years at the one and only University of Georgia. Go Dye. I will be majoring in nutritional sciences with a pre-med intent. Thank you so, so much for this honor. I really appreciate it. Right, right. So there was once a unicorn who liked to jump over rainbows. Anytime there wasn't a rainbow, she will become sad. If there was a rainbow, she will become happy, run to the end of the rainbow, and jump over it. So one night, the, a rainbow had appeared for only two minutes. The unicorn was sleeping. The next day, her friend came over there and said, Unicorn, didn't you see the rainbow yesterday? I thought you liked to jump over rainbows. Well, I didn't see it. I was asleep. And the unicorn got mad at her friend for not telling her. But, to be continued. So, guys, I'm going to make my video, like, very short. So, yeah. And comment down below and subscribe. Bye. You bet. I didn't see that video coming. Uh, well, uh, Tosi, my producer, I don't know how she got that video. Uh, I didn't give that video to her. That video is pretty old. And I'll tell you why I'm giving all that excuse. But anyway, I'm not being joined live now by uh, Tio Lulokbe, Pokwala, and Camila Abede. And uh, that's my daughter. Camila, did you see that video? Huh? Yes. Uh, you tell me about it. Anyway. Uh, Sure, look, uh, I watched your video. Uh, by the way, congratulations. Uh, you're Thank off to college. You. Yes, I am. Glad you made it. Good job. Thank you. So, um, let's, let's uh, start uh, with you, uh, Tiolu Lope. And, uh, you know, I, I started speaking with uh, a lot of uh, younger children today, and uh, they're all optimistic. Uh, they have their concerns, and uh, they really have a whole lot uh, for the continent. So uh, tell me, uh, Tio Lokwe, what are those other things you think uh, African leaders uh, should be addressing? I'll come back to talk about you later, you know, uh, or should we start with that scholarship? You recently won a scholarship at your school. Uh, uh, so how do, yes, you I... see, how do you feel about that? And can you tell us uh, what that scholarship is all about? Um, yes, I can talk a little bit about that. So um, my high school has this program called the STEM Magnet Program, where students are allowed to participate in different um, pathways pertaining to science, engineering, math, and technology. And you have the option to either do um, biomedical sciences, computer sciences, or um, engineering. And typically students um, only pick one of the pathways, but I opted and decided to do a double pathway of biomedical um, sciences and computer sciences. So in addition to that, I am within my school, I'm a leader of many clubs. Um, I'm a student, a student government, part of the student government association where I in charge of like hosting events for my class, senior class. I'm also a healthcare occupation students of America, which is a club for students interested in healthcare and many more clubs and extracurriculars. So about 50 kids apply to that scholarship each year, and they have to narrow it down to about two people, and you have to do an interview to get the scholarship. And I ended up winning the scholarship this year, thank God. Congratulations. And uh, to you, you uh, Camilla, uh, should I say you have or you had a YouTube channel where you talk about the things that excite you? Uh, what's, what's the latest about your YouTube channel? Um, I'm making a new one and I'm still like, you know, editing the um, stuff that needs to go on the YouTube channel. So, yeah. You edit yourself? Yeah. How, how did you know about editing? Who taught you how to edit? My friends. So you do your videos yourself? Yes. 
And uh, you had uh, Julie Lope, uh, she, she just uh, won a scholarship uh, to go to college. Uh, how does it feel uh, uh, watching people uh, who are older win uh, a scholarship to go to college? Uh, you still think uh, it's something that uh, you should also look up to? It feels good and great because I know that one day that will be me getting that scholarship. Okay, we'll come back to you and uh, talk more. To you, look, um, already uh, you are more like a role model for many, you know, younger ones coming up, and uh, that is uh, the more reason I've asked uh, Camilla how it feels like seeing that you have a scholarship. Um, now let's start talking about children, you know, back home on the continent. Do you feel, you know, concerned? Uh, about uh, education, uh, you know, in Nigeria, because you're a Nigerian. Um, some of the things that I've noticed is that there's certain subjects that aren't really talked to children, among, um, talked amongst children, and also children, their opinions are often shut down. It's like, oh, you're a child, you don't know what you're talking about. But children are surprisingly more observant and much smarter than you think. And there's some great ideas that children have. And you never know one day that child that you're shutting down their idea one day could become the president, um, could be one day treating you or one day be your lawyer. So I feel like that children need to be listened to a bit more. Yeah, I think uh, one of those I spoke to earlier on said the same thing, uh, a younger child. And she said uh, African leaders uh, must learn to listen uh, to children. Uh, do you think it's an African thing or something that, uh, that is cultural? Yeah, I believe it's quite, I believe it's quite cultural because often children, people consider children as just people who um, are still learning, but many adults can learn some lessons from children because children and adults, although we are both, they both have different age gaps you're still able to learn from each other because y'all both go from, through different experiences, whether it be from you being raised in one generation and a child being raised in another generation. Okay, I come back to you, Camila. Uh, you know, talking about some of the key things you love, uh, you make videos, uh, you edit your videos. Uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be um, a teacher. You know, you've always said you want to be a I'm teacher. A and uh, tell us why you really want to be a teacher. What are those key things you love about teaching? I like working with kids, and it's just like the adrenaline, the adrenaline I feel in teaching. Like when I was younger in the house, I used to teach my siblings and teach them like stories or whatever. So you love you, you love working with children. Are you tending any child at the moment around your neighborhood? Yes. You want to tell me about that kid? Yes. His name is Naeem. He's one years old right now. He's turning two this year in October. So he's turning two, and uh, you you watch over him. You you tend him, and uh, he, how does it feel? It feels good. It's like I'm his mother, but I'm not really not. But like he's like really attached to me, and I'm attached to him too. So today, uh, looking at the picture there, today is your big day. Coincidentally, you graduated today. Uh, tell me about this graduation. It was very really big, and I can't wait to start high school as a freshman because I know I have another long journey coming up, and yeah. So you're going to high school uh, at the moment. So it's a graduation from uh, a middle school to a high school. Yes. Uh, let me come to Tiola Lokba. Uh, Tiola Lokba, you know, um, being a, a Nigerian, you know, schooling abroad, how do you feel as an African child? Uh, is there a thing in you that makes you proud? or something that uh, maybe, have you ever encountered a bully uh, on account of you being an African? Um, yes, um, throughout middle and elementary school, I often got judged, especially because of my name. Um, people would of course come up with those ridiculous um, African stereotypes um, and 
often judged me as a person based on those stereotypes. And it hurt a lot, but eventually you just have to let it go and ignore who's talking about you, who's hurting your feelings, because at the end of the day, they're not going to be the ones who are getting you through school. They're not going to be the ones who are going to be collecting these awards that you win. They're not going to be the one who gets this, these amazing jobs. So you just have to ignore it sometimes. And now for you, Camila, have you ever encountered, how, how does one deal with bullying? Should any, have you ever encountered a bully? Yes, a lot. A lot? Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Um, when I started, when I started school here, I've been bullied like up until like I was in seventh grade. And I've changed school a lot of times, but it still happens. And the teachers, they barely do anything about it. But I really just don't care or listen to their comments that they make about me. And yeah. Were you hurt? A little bit. So how were you able to overcome it? I don't know. It just, I don't know. It changed me, though. How did it, how did it change you? My character, my personality is different from when it was last, last year. Is it, is it better or is it worse? It's better. It's better. No, I, I think I feel happy. So how, how do you spend your free hours out of school? I, yeah, I do gymnastics, I do karate, and I dance. And I love to write stories, too. So, um, uh, Tio Lulokwe, uh, you know, uh, we're talking about the future. I haven't actually asked you what excites you about the future. I'm very excited to make a change. That's, I really want to reach out to different communities who are underrepresented, uh, underrepresented and don't have enough resources. Um, I was quite fortunate enough to grow in a place, grow up um, with parents who have supported me in many of my passions. I want to do the same for other people and provide outlets for them to allow them to be who they are and also help others. So how, how do you think uh, um, that is coming for you? Yeah. Have you started any, um, you know, any small action within your environment, your immediate environment where you are? Yes. So one of the main ways I want to help people is through the healthcare field. I'm hoping to become a doctor, specifically an OBGYN. Um, I want to help um, deal with the crisis among minority women, specifically women of color, because they're almost four times as likely to suffer from complications from childbirth. So I want to um, become an OBGYN, specifically specializing in maternal fetal health and to learn what exactly is the cause of the sudden deaths of many mothers, um, the sudden complications that arise during birth, as well as the um, sudden complications that arise to the infant after being born. Um, and one way I've kind of been learning how to do this is at my high school, I've um, helped out at many blood drives hosted and also do many healthcare fairs, um, screening people for different um, diseases, also checking people's blood pressure, checking people's blood sugar, and so much more. You already sound like a doctor, like a qualified doctor already. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Camille, we're we'll rounding up any moment from now. Uh, looking at your immediate environment uh, quickly, are there other African children uh, that are friends with you? No, not really. So uh, what concerns you about the continent or uh, knowing full well that you are an African? H how bothered are you about educating the African child? I feel like the African children should get like free education. Like in America, we, we don't really get free education, but I feel like they should get free breakfast and food that they should serve so that the kids can be able to have the energy to go to classes and stuff. So, um, is there a thing you think you can do in the future to help in helping uh, ensuring that that uh, works? Yes. What are those things you look uh, things you look to do? It? I want to help children. Like after I want to um after I graduate college, I really want to go back to Nigeria to start my teaching career so I can help the children. Thank you. You want, you want to return to Nigeria after college uh, to help uh, 
in the teaching profession. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. That's good. And uh, quickly here, uh, let me bring out to the lock right here. Uh, is that is that you know a return uh, to Africa? You know, after college, uh, to help in the continent at any point in time in your career. Um, absolutely. I would love to come back to Nigeria or um, specifically Af just Africa in general to help um, encourage people mainly about nutrition. Um, when I go to college, I'll be majoring in that. Um, so I want to give more access to like ways to safely prepare food, safely store foods and how to have like a more balanced diet mm. because food is actually food is more than we think it is. Some people just consider food as a meal. Food can be used as medicine in so many different things. Well, that's a very good angle to explore, honestly. And, uh, well, uh, be rest assured that uh, the continent should give you that support. Uh, and uh, everyone here on New Central Television should be able to help every African child, irrespective of where they are, uh, to actualize in their uh, potential. It's been a fine moment, uh, you know, speaking with you, Tiolu Lokwe and, of course, uh, Camila. Uh, quickly here, Camila, are you having a party uh, today? No, not bully, really, but I'm hanging out with my friend. All right, good. All right, you have fun. Well, it's been an interesting one on one on the square today. And of course, indeed, Africa's future is safe and secure with these fantastic children. Uh, they've all spoken, you know, from across the continent, from across uh, the world. And uh, there's one thing uh, they're all about, uh, and it's about being, you know, uh, incorporated into uh, development, uh, you know, projects uh, and plans uh, and actions of the continent. We must nurture, yes, uh, protect, guard, and guide them aright uh, as they are the soul of the continent. I'd like to thank everyone, Tiolu Lokwe, Camila, uh, and of course, uh, Gianna, uh, Zawadi, uh, Billy, Omokorede, and uh, of course, uh, I keep, uh, I can't really remember. I know I have one more name, and uh, that uh, that yes, I really can't remember that name now. I thought my producer was going to help me with that name, but anyway, it's been a fine moment. Yes, uh, speaking with us uh, today on the show. Uh, see you again tomorrow. Bye bye.